Ali, it's good to see you. So you're uh, you're hardly optimistic on this scenario. Why do you think the oil is headed lower from here, even into the 20s? Thanks for having me, Kelly. I'm generally bearish because we face an unprecedented and historic situation in that we both have a supply shock and a demand shock at the same time. Obviously, the demand shock stems from the coronavirus, and then the supply shock was precipitated by this uh, price war declared by both the Saudis and the Russians as they try to stem the rise of American unconventional production. So that being the case, how low for how long? To be honest with you, I don't think there is a floor on the oil price. Certainly, it's some, somewhere in the 20s, but it could even go lower. Um, the only the floor will, will, will arise when, when physical barrels of production are taken offline. So the Saudis announced today that they're going to surge production from less than 10 million barrels a day to above 12 million barrels. The Russians have been producing near all out, but they've also, I think, announced plans to increase by about a half million barrels a day. And the Iraqis, the Emiratis, some of the other Gulf states can increase production by about another million barrels. So the market is going to be supplied by at least four, oversupplied by at least four million barrels at a time again when you have airlines slashing routes, people not driving their children to school in the morning, yeah. um, and other other demand shocks. Yeah, you, uh, the news today just keeps piling up. Harvard telling students not to come back from spring break. I mean, it just goes on and on. New Rochelle businesses are closed. So if we're 4 million barrels a day oversupplied, is the U.S. ultimately going to be the producer that has to pull back? Who's going to blink here? So that is the trillion-dollar question. Who is going to blink? Um, I think the Russians and the Saudis actually might have miscalculated, as they did several years ago when they, when they initiated the 2014 price war. The reality is that while the American unconventional producers are massively indebted, for them to take production offline still will require six to 12 months, right? Because they already have some cash flow uh, and they already have cash on the, on the books and they have sunk costs. So even if they sink into bankruptcy, it's still going to take six to 12 months for the actual barrels to be removed off the market. And the question is, do the Saudis and the Russians have the patience and um, are they willing to bleed cash mm -hmm. to ride out the storm? And nobody knows. And it's obviously going to be a political decision decided by at least Putin and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Who do you think can last longer, Saudi or Russia? So if you study the numbers, the, the, the Russians have been increasing their sovereign wealth fund reserves and foreign exchange reserves and gold reserves for the past several years to over uh, half a trillion dollars. The Saudis are at about the half trillion dollar mark as well. But the Saudi fiscal break even is much higher. It's near $90 a barrel while Russian fiscal break-even is in the 40s or, or low 50s. Mm. So the Russians, theoretically, and they've said it publicly as well, can, are likely to ride out the storm, be able to ride out the storm much longer than the Saudis.